Hi everybody. You haven't seen Spot in a while. He's a big, big boy. <laughs> and he's a lover. He's so sweet. Oh. Anyway, guys, I just and gals, I just whew, I just wanted to you know, when I first started my channel in 2012, the first season of 22 episodes, I said in there that my favorite things to eat, you always want to grow what you like to eat, right? And my favorite things are corn, tomatoes, and watermelon. So I had very little space in my California garden, and I knew if I ever got a lot more space, I would want to grow big patches of all three. So I want to take you through the timeline of growing corn this first year in my lower garden. I'm not sure I would call it a success. <laughs> Why don't you be the judge? I'm making mounds. Uh, the mounds are a little rough and I'm going to add a strip of compost to the top of the mound. So I'm pretty excited that I managed to create these mounds this morning, just myself with a shovel. Kind of ran out of steam. I need to do three more right here, but I thought, let me change it up a little bit. i uh, do a different task and maybe my body will uh, be ready to get back at that. Jumping ahead and uh, wetting the top crest of the five rows uh, that are set to plant for corn and I'm not waiting for the rain. I managed to hook up a hose going all the way up to my cistern. There's not a lot of water in there but there's enough to just get this wet and get the seed in. Oh man it's hot but look at that. Five rows. I know it's not much because look how much more I have to do. And it really all should be done the same way because if you mound things up, it's easier to walk in between and it's easier to weed. I do a pass, one strip right beside and I build up each side of the mound. So now I have to go down this side and build up and I'll scoop all of that dirt up and I'll put it right on top of that groove and I'll just keep going down and my goal is to get these uh, four rows done and planted before it's just incredibly too hot. I'm dripping with sweat, it's hot, but I got the three additional rows mounded. These two are watered, wet, wetted, and fertilizer put in. Taking water from my cistern through a hose down here, and that's the best that I can do for now. Very interesting. These are Thomas Jefferson heirloom corn seeds. And it's a long corn that you can grind for white corn flour. But if you harvest it early, it's as good as any sweet corn. And this was given to me by my friend Tim Hobbs, who will grind it if I get any. <laughs> he said, eat a little and then bring the rest to me in December and I'll grind it. So I just had enough of the Thomas Jefferson for these two rows. So they are in the trench and I watered them in and the fertilizer soaked in. And now I am packing that groove with one inch of wet compost, pure compost. You see all this organic matter in here. This is all chopped up clover. So this is gonna provide a lot of good drainage and organic matter breaking down for the corn. I'm just going to push these down a little bit so they're nice and secure. I noticed the other day they, a few of them popped up when I finished and they were watered. We don't want that. I am so excited. Look at this soil. This is what was underneath the Clover. Oh, look at that. Oh man, I want to get something planted in here ASAP.
All right, so that's what I just raked up. And uh, now we have that whole section there to go. I just replanted my corn seed because I only had a few come up and the man that was here yesterday said, looks like the birds got the seed. I don't see evidence of that, but it didn't come up. My corn from my friend Daryl, we call it lucky corn because he developed the corn over a period of 25 years. You saw his stand of corn in one of his, one of the videos I did at his place this summer and his corn looked beautiful and I got to eat a whole ear raw and it was fantastic. That's what I was looking forward to here. And I finally got seeds in the ground for the third time on June the 11th. to redirect the water that left big gashes all through this garden because it's not level, it's not flat. Working with a slope here. So we got major gashes down below and they cut across right towards the middle. So he has cut me a trench this way and I am replanting corn. I'm not doing it the hard way with all the mounds because they left me one corn plant on that whole, all nine of those rows. The crows ate all of the seeds. And you can see here, I've been seeing them in the morning and they're picking through the whole top of the row. I just made it like a buffet for them. So I think they call that easy pickings in the South. So I am just, I just set some rows here. I put down some organic fertilizer and I'm gonna drop in some seeds and cover it with row cover cloth until they come up. And of course we're getting the electric, but that won't help with the crows. Okay, I'm working on my third row here. Got the seed in there, I put in a lot of seed and I've got five to go. I ran out of seed so the Last row is going to have to be peas or something. It's just amazing what you can get done when you have help. I had so many of the eight footers around this top 15 feet. He was able to spread them out and I think we're going to be able to just use those all along the big garden. But look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more rows of corn, and the back row is purple hole peas. But as you can see, I put down row cover cloth over the corn. I need to do some more. So somehow I got through the rest of June. My sister died five days after I planted seeds. And it was hot and dry until the end of June. And so I was busy hauling water down on the back of my four wheeler. Not terribly safe, but that's what I did do. And that's how the corn got watered. Okay, everyone, here's the big reveal. You probably know that both of my first two plantings of corn, the crows ate the seed. So I had this on there to protect it. And we're going to reveal what's underneath. This has not been watered in seven days during a terrible heat wave in the 90s every day. You see, we got some gaps, but we also got some corn. So, I'm going to give this a good watering, and then I'm going to show you how the whole thing looks. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my goodness. I am thrilled. I'm going to have some corn at least. And I'm going to have peas. Oh, well that was, that was a really nice surprise. I'm just going to keep uh, doing a little watering and then I'm going to uh, call a short day. Now that I actually have some plants coming up in the corn, I'm going to uh, make a more defined trench so I can run water down through it because I've got just enough slope not have to stand here and hold the hose the whole time. Wow, look at the corn today. This is third planting of corn. Just got watered. It's gonna have to be thinned, but we'll wait for that. Everything was going great. I got it sprayed twice with BT and Captain Jack's dead bug brew because last year I had armyworm in my tiny little patch over here. I had two-thirds of a quart jar of seed that I had saved from over here. And it wasn't the best seed, you know, because the stalks weren't great, the ears weren't great, but it's what I had. And that's what I used for those seven rows. And I planted it very thickly, hoping that, you know, I could thin it down to the best of stalks every four to six inches. And that's what I did. This one's the best looking one of all, this one. And so, I'm going to create some space there. This is the second best looking one but it's only two inches away. But we've got this big gap over here. So... Uh-huh, there's a bug in there. See it? The bugs were just escaping. The bugs are everywhere. <laughs> I know bugs gotta eat, okay? But there's a whole forest out there. In the beginning of July, around there, it started to rain. And we had the wettest July. We had storm after storm. I made video after video about all of the rain that we were getting, all the storms, the lightning, the, you know, the whole thing. I made several videos about that, you probably remember. My goodness. Wow, look, I missed... These two are way too close together. I missed that. Well, we'll see what happens. Ooh, I've got another couple that are very close together here. You know, I did a whole thinning video. Tried to get everything back to four inches apart. I may need to come back and, and do it again. But isn't this exciting? Now, we've already had the 4th of July. And look. Okay, so my knees are down here. The expression goes knee high by 4th of July. It's hard to see, but it's above my knees. <laughs> so, some of them, you know, some of them are smaller. And what I noticed is where I cut the corns, they grew back. Look at these little ones. For sure I did that. So, <laughs> I'd love to plant that, but, uh, you know, 
I really kind of missed the opportunity to come back and do the second thinning. Oh, look at this. All of these little ones that I cut grew back. Oh gosh, the bugs are already out. Uh, speaking of bugs, I need to get down here and spray these again. Now that we've had so much rain, got to get that sprayed. All right, let's check out, wow, these two rows, this row of peas and this row of corn really grew together, didn't it? Clearly, very, very clearly, I was attacked. I'm pretty upset. So we have tracks. Tracks. Track. Track, track. 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 Looks like they jumped over the fence right there and went that way. And then at some point, came over here and ate down the corn on the end. Destroyed that. The front of it is rounded like a dome. Okay. A buck be like this. They'd be more square on. Like that. Yeah, that's a buck. That's a little buck right there. Oh. See, it's not rounded. So are these two from the same animal? They Couldn't must be. Probably. Well, that was a doe track. You had two of them in here. Well, I don't know what happened to this corn, but I mean, fortunately it wasn't too many. It was just one. Two, three, four. Oh, it looked like something's got in that. Ain't it? And that one, see? Mm hmm. Yeah, that's what they done. They got in that corn. After that, it didn't rain anymore. So from the last week of July until August 26th, which is when these stalks were cut down, this is what happened. Okay, I just got down to the garden and some of the corn is laying on the ground. Two more I actually pushed up. I'm fairly certain that's from the storm yesterday. Well, this one, I'm not sure if it just legitimately broke off or what. I don't see any deer tracks right here since yesterday's storm so I'm assuming that legitimately broke off and it just got covered in ants and stuff I hope this feels so good oh there's another one yeah, part of the problem was I didn't thin it enough. You know, they're too close together. And gosh, I'm gonna do things so much diff more differently next year. Look at this. Look at these peas growing up this corn stalk. Now this is the three sisters approach. Beans, corn, and squash. In this case, the squash is <laughs> over there so I've got beans and squash together there but the corn is what provides the 
growing up aspect and actually probably gives it support. Got a lot of problems with the corn. I don't know what's causing this, but what is this? You know, see what's happening. Corns are get, getting eaten by something or other. They're not mature. Wow, this was so promising. <sighs> I worked so hard. And this has to be something. I haven't researched this. I'm going to. What causes that? The silks aren't done. So. Danny at Deep South could tell me what's going on with this. Look at this. This is. See? These are still moist, so. Not ready to eat. Anyway, it's not big enough, not mature enough. I actually don't see one ear of corn on here with all of this rain. I don't see one ear of corn that might be salvageable. Okay, folks, this is what you call Heartbreak City. I'm going to walk through my corn patch, which is all the leaves are like that and I really don't even see a corn cob that's I mean how can the corn cobs continue to grow if the leaves are all dead not possible see look I'm going to have to figure out what went wrong because the seed is the same as my friend Daryl's and this corn was beautiful. Well, you know, I guess with such a rough start, I was a little too hopeful that things would go great. It did look good for about a minute. Let's go down this way, see if we see anything. See, this looks like, might have a few bites on it, but it's tassels aren't done. But look, this is already, yeah. And this is weird too, see? I've never seen this start happening. These are dried up, so actually, but it's really skinny. Oh, good grief. Look at that. Look at the size of that worm. Well, caterpillar, I should say. Yeah, whenever you see that sort of mushy stuff at the top, like that, you know there's a, a worm in it. But see, it's not even edible for human because none of the kernels developed. So let them have it. Look at this. What kind of bug is that? That's a new one on me.
guarantee you it's not good. You know, I really hate to walk in here. Just listen. So let's just, for example, look inside here. Oh my goodness. There's something edible in there. This reminds me of my tiny California garden when I was growing corn and I just have like the littlest thing to, to test. I should have had a whole patch of this, but it just didn't work out. But hey, mm. I should have saved that for seed. Who knows if I'm gonna get any other seed. It's good. Should have ate it four days ago. If the worm liked it, you know it's good, right? Everything happened so fast. We're talking June 11th to August 26th. Wow. That's only 60 plus 80 days. 80 days, yeah. So, first it was crows. Kind of got that figured out. Second, it was deer. Kind of got that figured out because someone suggested, and I jumped on it, draping a row of the twinkly lights from eight footer to eight footer. So it's kind of obscure as to exactly where the wire is all the way around. And at night it's twinkling at various modes. I have numerous strips around there and they're all in a different mode. So. Just when things looked fantastic with the corn at the end of July, everything went south. I sent a letter to the extension office. He sent a letter in to the biologist at University of Tennessee who responded. She wasn't exactly sure, you know, uh, if it was an heirloom. She said, of course, they're much less resistant to everything. Of course, it is an heirloom. And so, you know, it may be that I cannot grow an heirloom here and get a, a crop. I don't know. But on August 26th, the stalks came out. And I had only had one taste, one little taste of a partial ear of corn. So all of those cobs in those two baskets, they were, you know, full of worms and bugs and, and you know, not many had kernels in them. I was going to make tincture from the corn silks. So I put everything in the refrigerator to keep it still fresh and there it sat until it was too late to do anything about it. So the at least the stalks got eaten by my neighbor's cows. So it didn't all go to waste. But it was a great learning exercise and I think, you know, since I've kind of tackled a couple of the major issues, I'm all set up with the electric if I can figure out this browning, but it may, it may just be a question of the fact that we had so much rain in July and we had too much rain and then we had drought, nothing. And I didn't water and obviously I should have watered and I didn't water because I had such a big garden and I thought, I kept thinking it was gonna rain and rain is so much better than me standing down there dribbling with a hose. So I never did that and I'm sure that was a mistake. So I am going to try again. 
next year. Uh, I can't not try to grow corn here. It may be that I can't grow an heirloom. I don't know. I mean, if, if Daryl can do it, why can't I? He works on his soil. He's been working on his soil, developing it with manure and hay and just over 25 years. So his soil is so rich and corn is a heavy feeder. Uh, so, and I didn't add any fertilizer, you know, except in the beginning. So that probably didn't help. But, you know, the garden got so big and so, uh, you know, it's too much for me to handle. So that's what happened with the corn. I hope this has been eye-opening to you. I hope you've learned something. And I hope that you will subscribe, follow my journey here to develop a sustainable homestead right here in Tennessee. I look forward to seeing you and hearing from you often in the comments. God bless, and I'll see you next time.